All right, I'm Rob Yagno from Lazy Eight Studios. I'm going to talk a little bit about implicit surfaces. So, um, when I say that implicit surfaces, that probably sounds a little bit like gyroscopic stabilization or some like really <laughs> scary kind of term. So I want to just kind of like ease you into this and, and, and basically introduce this to a to you as a tool that you can have in your toolbox for um, for for games. Um, and with that, I'm going to go crazy and do a live demo. I'm going to up the ante, basically, here. All right. So, what are implicit surfaces? In general, in video games, we very explicitly define what our, our surfaces are. So we have polygons, we have points, and we create this very explicit geometry. Think of implicit surfaces as basically fuzzy geometry. It's as simple as that. So well, what I've done here is I've created a bunch of layers in Photoshop here. And I can take these individual layers, and I'm, I'm actually blending them in an additive way here, so as I overlay them, they're just adding on top of each other. Um, and then you can see that these, like, they're kind of these fuzzy boundaries that are getting changed. Um, so I'm basically simulating what you would do on a GPU if you wanted to create implicit surfaces in 2D. So if I just add in a, um, let me turn this off, a contrast enhance, where, so this is just like a, a contrast layer that I've added in. Um, that takes everything above 50% gray, and makes it white, and everything below, and makes it black. And now that you'll see that as I move these layers around, you have these little nice, like, blobular kind of edges. So in Extra Solar, we're using this because we're creating a top-down view on, on our map. And as you're revealing the fog of war, we wanted kind of like this organic boundary for the masking. And, and this is just a super easy way to do that, um, with, with, like, very little computational power. So little that, you know, it's super easy to mock up in Photoshop. Not only that, but if we, if we add in like um, you know another layer, like what I'm interested in saying, for instance, in this particular case, well, what's the latest stuff that I've drawn? What are the, what are the map tiles that we're updating? Well, if I render that to the red channel, oops, let me grab that layer and move around. So, so let me turn off the contrast. This is just another fuzzy surface here. But since it's rendered entirely to the red channel, as I move that around, like you get this kind of like globular stuff going on here. Um, that content, you know, contains this sort of like organic feel, but also makes it really easy to see where the lines have changed. And, and you know, by changing things like right, right now, I'm using additive blending in my Photoshop layers. But if I use something like, for instance, just alpha blending, then the way that this interaction with the surfaces is different. So it's really easy to kind of mock up um, use of implicit surfaces in 2D just in Photoshop and kind of get a feel for the cool stuff that you can do. Um, you know, another example, let's say that you just want a little bit more noise in here. This is adding a little bit of a noise layer. And when I go back to thresholding that, like, I'm actually going to move around the noise layer. And you can see, like, kind of get this, like, like nice wobbly feel going on here. Um, I, the implicit surface I originally defined as being between, um, like, right at 50% gray. But if I want that thing to grow or shrink, I can just change the threshold at which I'm defining my implicit surface. So there are all kinds of things that you can do here, and none of this basically requires any explicit geometry. So just think of this as like a, a powerful tool that you can have in your toolkit. So let me get back now and to, to my, uh, to, my um, to how you might expand this to 3D. So um, it's all great to do this in 2D, but when you expand to 3D, the dimensionality of the space is kind of too big to use those like per pixel calculations that you can fairly simply do on the GPU. So when you expand implicit surfaces in 3D, you still start with these fuzzy volumes. You, like, you create a function that defines this fuzzy volume, usually like a distance. Like what's the distance from the outside of the sphere, which is a very easy mathematical equation to create. Um, but then we convert that back into an explicit surface. And the most common algorithm for doing that is called margin cubes. So I'm just going to kind of very quickly go through it just so you know that it's a tool that you can have in your toolbox. The basic idea is you create this, this 3D grid, and at each point in the grid, you define your distance function. You can then look at the eight points, like any adjacent eight points, and just by looking at the value of like which points are below zero, which points are greater than zero when you add your distance functions together, you can figure out where the vertices need to go to create polygons to turn this into a real surface. So just like we're using the 2D implicit surfaces for the extrasolar maps, we are using the 3D um, implicit surfaces for the extrasolar terrain. And this is an example of like, this is what we start with. We start with like a, a function that's relatively easy to define mathematically, and we use that for these stone dikes that are all over the island. We then perturb that and add in like some noise functions and some turbulence to this sort of core function, and we get these nice geometric shapes. I mean, one of the advantages here is that you get this like 
this huge amount of variety that all looks very natural. It's all over the island. And because the, the bottom terrain is one implicit, is basically defined by one implicit function, and then we're adding in this dike with another implicit function, at the junction between those two pieces of geometry, we get this really nicely blended geometric surface. So, so these are, this is the great stuff about implicit functions. The bad stuff, like you can get some really <laughs> cool things. If you like really up the noise function, you get stuff like this. And this is where it starts to get a little tough, is that if you up that noise function too much, too much noise, too much turbulence, you start to get things like little pieces of floating geometry, and that is really hard to control. It's very hard to detect. And particularly with this game, because we're using like multi-level crazy, um, crazy ways of like doing um, like multi-resolution noise, it's it's almost impossible to eliminate this kind of stuff. Like because, just because a floater exists at one terrain resolution doesn't mean it exists in another terrain resolution. So you have to be careful not to get holes. So there's all kinds of cool stuff. Here's another example. Like we're also using this to create these ledges. One of the things we really wanted to do to, to in this, this game is create terrain that you wouldn't normally see in a, ter in a typical terrain engine. So undercuts like this are really hard to do. Not only have we created this, but we've had this like very natural blends between the undercut rock and the rest of the terrain. So, so this is like something that's really easy to do with implicit functions and really hard to do with anything else. Um, so just to kind of give you a rundown of the good, the bad, and the ugly. The good, you get these nice smooth intersections. You can get a lot of variety in shape just by throwing in some noise functions. You get this really natural appearance. The bad is that it's hard to control. You kind of need to really have a good understanding of the mathematical function that you're using. You can get these floating pieces of geometry that are really hard to get rid of. And uh, sharp edges, like you can kind of really only get nice smooth surfaces with implicit functions. Getting hard edge surfaces tends to cause floaters and artifacts and stuff that's hard to, hard to get rid of. Um, so hopefully now you'll see implicit surfaces as a, as a little bit more of a friendly tool that you can use in your toolbox uh, for, for game creation. Thanks.